air is free, the water flows in the rippling brook. It's easy to see all's right with the world. Oh, my nose! Oh, my nose! Oh, oh my oh. goodness! All's not oh. right with my friend Bear. What happened? It's those miserable bees! They stung me again! And for nothing! For nothing? Well, almost nothing. I was going to taste their uh, some of their honey. My friend, when will you learn that if you insist in taking from others in life, you must expect a sharp pain? Please, may I take this sermon later? For now, just tell me what to do about my nose. Go to the river and put some mud on it. Thank you. I shall. Oh, when will my friends learn there is enough for everyone in this world without robbing others? <coughs> <laughs> Hi, my friends. It's good to see you so happy. Oh, we are. Shall we tell you what we did? You tell them, Rabbit. No, you tell them, Squirrel. You tell stories better than I do, Rabbit. You tell them. Well, one of you please just tell me? All right, I will. You know, Frances the Fox? Indeed I do. She has a garden full of most wonderful things, lettuce and radishes and... I thought I was going to tell this story. My pardon, after you. We told Francis that in the far end of the forest there grew carrots as big as trees. So this morning when she got, she went to get some, we jumped into her garden and ate and ate and ate. This is my story, remember. Oh, that was delicious. You are both very foolish. There will be trouble for you when she returns. Oh, Brother Unicorn, laugh with us and don't give us a sermon on a full stomach. Indeed. One should be in pain when listening to a sermon. Brother Bear did not think so. But soon we'll know how she feels, for here comes Francis now. Oh, we must run. Don't tell her where we are. Sam, Sam, wait for me! With so much good in this world, why do my friends find so much bad to do? Good morning, Mrs. Fox. Dear Unicorn, I am in such a state. Squirrel and Rabbit set me on a fool's errand this morning, and while I was gone, they robbed my garden. Have you seen them? Tell me, what will you do when you find them? Oh, I am going to eat them. Dear me, now you are talking like Adolf the Wolf. That's right. That's the way it's going to be from now on. No more vegetables and salads for me. From now on, I'm going to eat meat. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What has happened to the forest? Soon no creature will be safe from any other. I don't care. They started it. Do you know where they are, Brother Unicorn? I think you would be wise to go that way. Thank you, Brother Unicorn. And if I catch them, you must come to dinner. I don't know. I liked your dinners of greens, Mrs. Fox. But I don't think I shall care to eat my friends, or else they might like to eat me. Suit yourself. But the way things are going these days, they may anyway. This way, you say? Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Good morning, Brother Unicorn. What are you doing? Thinking, Brother Wolf. Thinking? What on earth for? <laughs> I was wondering why, with all the good in the world, my friends hunger after bad. I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm hungry, too. <laughs> I'm making some bread. I'll be glad to share with you. Bread? I'm hungry. I want meat. Goodness. Do you think it's right for the strong to live off the weak? I shouldn't live at all if I tried to live off the strong. But don't worry about your forest friends. I want to try some, some new meat. The tenderest in the world. Man. Oh, my goodness. You are not thinking of eating a man. As a matter of fact, I am. And don't give me one of your sermons. Just tell me one thing. What kind of man tastes best? Believe me, none of them taste any good at all. But let me warn you, above all, don't eat any little boys. They taste simply terrible. All little boys? Without exception. And little old ladies are tough and stringy. If you want a tender man, you should try the blacksmith. The blacksmith? Yes, he works by the fire all day, and this keeps his flesh soft and tender. A blacksmith. I'll remember that. Yes, I'll try one for my very first try. If you don't mind, I must go to bake my bread now. You don't mind if I wait here for the blacksmith, do you? No, be my guest. 
But be sure it's a blacksmith you taste. As I was sitting all alone, who should come up to me but a jolly, rosy blacksmith as tasty as could be. Hello there. Are you a blacksmith? Of course not. I'm a boy. Can't you tell? You do look unappetizing. Well, on your way. Oh, I, I see what the unicorn means about boys. I'm sure one bite out of that hide and I'd get a stomach ache for days. Hello there, my friend. Are you a blacksmith? What a silly question. Do I look like a blacksmith? Are you or are you not a blacksmith? Of course not. I'm a little old lady. Well, I should have guessed. All tough and stringy. Well, on your way. I'm waiting for a blacksmith. You're not very polite. I don't have to be polite. I'm a wolf. And if you think I'm going to eat something all tough and stringy just to be polite, oh, people are so inconsiderate. Hello. Are you by any chance a blacksmith? Why, yes, I am. Can I do anything for you? You are? Good. I'm going to eat you. That's what you think. Well, Mr. Blacksmith, has Adolf finished his dinner? He's finished it, but I think he's lost his taste for man. I hope so. I feel sorry for the poor fellow. But he who won't learn by one man's kindness must learn by another man's discipline. It's a hard lesson, but I must be on my way. <laughs> By the way, I have a whole shop full of hammers if Adolf wants an after-dinner mint. <laughs> Adolf! Adolf! Wake up! Wake up! What? What happened? What happened? That's what I was going to ask you when I found you like this. I think I ate a blacksmith. At least I started to. Good heavens! That was the toughest meat I ever ate. I think I will see Frances about helping her tend her garden. I don't think I ever want to eat meat again. The taste is all right, but it's so hard on the digestion. Yeah.